on supply only we will be collecting the tax from the recipients or the final user of the product any supply of goods and services which attracts gst that will be considered as the taxable supply taxable person is nothing but the person who is liable to pay tax to the government he is called taxable person under gst if you are selling the goods and services then the taxable event will arise Hello everyone I am Arun Kumar lecturer in department of commerce and management Vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence Mysore dear students welcome to this new session on unit number 3 session 1 that is on the topic levy and collection of tax yes here we should have to aware about how we are supposed to impose or how we are supposed to levy the tax on the supply of goods or the services and on what basis on what time we are supposed to collect the tax from the supplier and who is responsible to collect the tax from the recipient or from the final user of the product so with respect to that in this session we are going to study about how to levy and collect the tax with respect to gst so now first we have to understand what is supply because on supply only we will be collecting the tax from the recipients or the final user of the product so what is this supply we all know what is supply in general supply is nothing but supplying any goods and services that means selling any goods and services is called supply but with respect to gst what is supply so it explains the taxable event in gst is supply of goods or services or both yes you can impose or you can collect the tax only if you are supplying the goods and services or both yes here the taxable event that means the taxable event occurs that means the situation will arise the tax collection situation will arise or the levying of tax situation will arise only if you are selling the goods or services or both yes if you are selling the goods and services then the taxable event will arise next various taxable events like that means we have various taxable events just we will not only selling the goods or just we will not only selling the products along with that we also have some other activities that is manufacture yes if you are manufacturing if you are purchasing the raw material on raw material you will be paying the tax that will be also called as supply and sale that means if you are selling any products goods and services then you will be you know imposing or levying tax and rendering of service yes if you are sending you know rendering any services like cable service or any other kind of services then that will be also considered as supply purchase yes if you are purchasing that will be also considered as supply next entry into a territory of state yes that means if you are selling the goods from one state to another state or from one union territory to another union territory or from one state to another union territory that will be considered as supply so the taxable event in gst is supply of goods and services that means we will be imposing the tax on supply of goods and services and we will be imposing on manufacture sale rendering of service purchase entry into a territorial of state etc have been done away with in favor of just one event of supply the constitution defines goods and services tax as any tax on supply of goods or services or both except for taxes on supply of alcoholic liquor for human consumption yes the tax that is goods and services tax is applicable on all kind of transaction whether it is supply of goods or supply of services except alcoholic liquor for human consumption that means we are not yet imposing gst on supply of alcoholic liquor for human consumption so this is the meaning of supply so the taxable event will occurs only if the supplier is supplying the goods or services or both and the various taxable events like manufacture sale rendering of service purchase anything will be the taxable event that means on that transaction we will be imposing the tax that is gst moving further taxable supply so what is this taxable supply everyone can supply the goods or everyone can supply the 
services but if it is taxable then only we can you know impose or levy the tax on such supply so for a supply to attract gst the supply must be taxable that means if you are supplying any goods if you are supplying any goods that goods or services must attract the tax that must attract the gst that means 5% 12% 18% or 28% but that particular supply should attract the gst some rate of gst then only it will be called as taxable supply so for a supply to attract gst the supply must be taxable and taxable supply has been broadly defined and means any supply of goods or services or both which is levyable to tax under the act yes that means any supply of goods and services which attracts gst that will be considered as the taxable supply next exemptions may be provided to the specified goods or services or to a specified category of persons entities for making supplies yes exemptions are provided yes exemptions are provided for few goods and services so few goods and services are exempt from tax and also on few goods and services the rate of gst will be very less that means the rate of gst will be 0% so taxable supply is nothing but if the goods or services attracts any percent of tax that is 5% 12% 18% or 28% then that will be considered as taxable supply and few taxable supplies are exempted that means the rate of gst will be nil or zero rate or that particular goods or services will be exempted from tax so this is the meaning of taxable supply so moving further taxable person under gst yes what is this taxable person taxable person is nothing but the person who is liable to pay tax to the government he is called taxable person under gst so who and all is liable who is supposed to pay tax to the government a taxable person under gst is a person who carries on any business at any place in india and who is registered or required to be registered under the gst act so any person any taxable person who is carrying business in india and who is registered under gst and who is supposed to be registered under gst in future that person will be called as taxable person under gst act so any person who engages in economic activity any person who engages in economic activity including trade and commerce is treated as a taxable person yes if you are supplying any goods if you are supplying any services then you will be called as taxable person so why you will be called as taxable person because if you are doing any businesses then obviously you have to pay tax to the government that is why you will be called as taxable person and the word person here includes the word person includes an individual hef company firm limited liability partnership firm and association of person body of individual any corporation or government company or body corporate incorporated on the laws of foreign country cooperative society local authority government trust artificial judicial person that means the word person is refers to the person who no pay tax to the government so who and all will be paying tax to the government all those people will be called as person according to gst law so as a individual will be paying gst as a business entity will be paying gst as a hindu undivided family will be paying gst and as a company will be paying gst as a foreign company will be paying gst as a government authority sometimes will be paying gst so who and all will be paying tax to the government those people will be called as person according to gst act so next moving further transactions which are treated neither as supply or goods not supply of services yes few transactions are not considered as supply of goods or supply of services so which are those transactions the first one here is service provided by an employee to his employer during the employment in the company yes service provided by an employee to his employer if any service provided by the employee to his employer that will not be considered as 
supply or supply of services or supply of goods because he is working for salary the employee is working for salary with the employer so here it is a you know kind of transaction where you will be paying the tax through income tax that is direct tax it will not be considered as supply of services or supply of goods so which one the services provided by the employee to the employer that will not be considered as neither a supply nor a service next one service provided by an any court or tribunal established by any law for the time being in force the term court includes district courts high court and supreme court yes services provided by any court that will not be considered as any supply of goods or the services because that is the responsibilities the government is performing so court here refers to any district court high court or supreme court next one functions performed by the members of parliament yes any functions performed by the members of parliament that will not be considered as supply of goods or the supply of services next the state legislature panchayats municipalities and other local authorities that means any functions performed by any member of parliament or state legislature or the panchayats or by municipal corporations that will not be considered as supply of goods or the services next one duties performed by any person who holds any post as per the provision of constitution yes if any duty is performed by the person who is holds any position as per the provision of constitution that duty will also not be considered as supply of goods or the services next one duty is performed by any person as a chair person or a member or a director in a body established by the central or state governments or local authorities and who is not deemed as an employee before the commencement of this clause yes if any duties performed by the person who is appointed by the government whether by the state government or the central government that particular duty will not be considered as supply of services or supply of goods next one all the services related to funeral burial or cremation or mortuary including transportation of the deceased yes if any functions performed if any services performed due to cremation or funeral or mortuary so those particular services are not be considered as supply of services and no tax will be imposed on those kind of services next sale of land and sale of building provided that the sale is made only after the completion of construction of such building yes the sale of land and the sale of building provided that the sale is made only after the completion of construction of such building so that sale will not be considered as the sale of services or the sale of goods so actionable claims other than lottery betting and gambling yes lottery betting and gambling for this the gst will be applicable but for actionable claims other than you know the lottery or winning from betting or winning from gambling here actionable claims if you are earning any you know profit from you know financial instruments so there there will be no tax on such profit so only the tax will be imposed on lottery betting and gambling so next moving further composite or mixed supply yes so here we will be learning about what is composite supply and what is mixed supply a composite supply means a supply made by a taxable person to a recipient comprising two or more supply of goods or services or any combination thereof that means here the supplier is supplying two or more than two products to the recipient which are naturally bundled and supplied in conjunction with each other in ordinary course of business one of which is a principal supply yes here in composite supply the supplier will be supplying two or more than two products to the recipient where the products are naturally bundled for example cell phone so with cell phone you will be giving charger as well as headphone so here these three products are naturally bundled and the phone is going to be the principal supply so that is called composite supply so where the two or more goods 
bundled together and one good is going to be a principal supply that means it's going to be the basic supply and other remaining goods will be depending on the principal supply that is called composite supply for instance a travel ticket from mumbai to delhi may include service of food being served on board free insurance and the use of airport launch in this case the transport of passenger constitutes of predominant element of the composite supply and is treated as the principal supply and all other supplies are ancillary that means here the particular traveler is traveling from one place to another place so he is traveling from mumbai to delhi and while he was traveling he received different kinds of benefits like insurance and other benefits so here in this particular problem the transport of passenger constitutes the predominant element of the composite supply that means for his transportation for his traveling purpose he also receiving other benefits so where other benefits will be treated as dependent supply with respect to principal supply so in composite supply one product will be you know basic or the principal supply and other bundled products will be dependent supplies on the principal supply next the gst law lays down the tax liability on the composite or mixed supply in the following manner that means in composite supply comprising two or more supplies one of which is a principal supply shall be treated as supply of such principal supply yes here in composite supply whatever the tax rate applicable on principal supply the same rate is applicable on the other depending products in case if 18% is applicable on principal supply then this 18% is applicable on the total value of the composite supply and in mixed supply mixed supply comprising two or more supplies shall be treated as supply of that particular supply which attracts the highest rate of tax yes in mixed supply two or more products are bundled together and sold for a single price here in mixed supply no item is depending on each other no item is depending on each other so each item will be independent need not to bundle together but they bundled together and sold for a single price that is called mixed supply so in mixed supply the highest rate of gst is collectible or highest rate of gst will attract on the total value of the supply in mixed supply but in composite supply the tax applicable on principal supply that tax rate will be applicable on the total value of supply so with this i'm going to wind up this session i'm going to come up with new topics in the upcoming session until then thank you all have a nice day namaste